1 Peter 5, 7, Casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. Welcome to Casting Cares, a weekly radio show devoted to life issues and relationships. Your hosts, Pastor Gerald and Merrill Lee Hagerman, are here to answer your questions from God's Word. Email your questions to castingcaresradio.com. So grab a cup of coffee, turn up the radio, and let's get started. Well, good morning. This is Pastor Gerald Hagerman. This is Mary Lee. And we'd like to welcome you to Casting Cares. We're from Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel in Yucca Valley, California. And we are so glad that you've tuned in to today's program. Mary Lee, how are you with all of the Christmas season upon us now? You know, Gerald, the more that uh, it approaches us, it makes me feel like I don't have anything done yet. <laughs> Although I have at least got some of the Christmas tree up and, and still have a lot of shopping to do. But but um, as far as uh, ready, I don't know if we are ever really quite ready for Christmas. But keep in mind that it is all about Jesus. So, I mean, if we don't even get the rest of the stuff done, does it really matter? That's right. And, you know, uh, my suggestion always is to people merely is that they start their family Christmas celebrations centered around Jesus Christ. Exactly. So if your church has a Christmas Eve uh, service or something like that, begin your family celebration by worshiping the Lord. That's always going to be the best thing. So here we are on Casting Cares Radio. This next half hour is going to be dedicated to your questions on life issues and relationships. If you have a problem or a situation that you're in that you would just like another set of opinions, that's why this program has been designed and it's for you. So go ahead and send us in your dilemma and we'll do the best we can to offer you uh, some wisdom from God's Word and years of experience experience and being married uh, between the two of us we've been married 64 years That's and right. uh, faced death and we faced life and we face continuing on after a heartbreak so uh we're we tried and true christians that love the lord and so go ahead and send us your uh questions and we'll do the best we can and you can send those to castingcaresradio.com email those to us castingcaresradio.com you can go on facebook and become friends of ours on facebook on casting cares radio as well and on both of those all programs are archived and you can even subscribe on itunes just in case you miss a program live here on csn i do want to spend a send a special thank you and hi out there to our girls at the 29 base out military base uh we have a new hope calvary chapel bible study that goes on out there that's being taught by one of our great gals here, Gina, and she's doing a great job with those girls, and we just want to send out a special hi to them. I know they're listening this morning, and uh, we're going to go ahead and try to answer some questions, so hopefully uh, we'll be able to get to some of yours. So, Okay. Okay, Gerald? Uh, well, you have, I believe, the first question there, okay. don't you, Marilyn? Yes, I have a question here, and this one says, my husband has a hard time with confidence in anything like work, just being a good husband, a father, the future. How can I be supportive and help him have faith? What can I do to help him remember to trust God? I need the right words to say. Well, you know, Marilee, that's a great question. And again, I, I think so many times men can feel insecure. And it, it's one of the great needs that men have is to feel in charge, be in charge. That's why even in the book of Ephesians, when it's giving the superstructure of marriage, it says, husbands, love your wives. And the instructions for the wives are wives, respect your husband. So there's this deep ingrained uh, thing within men to feel feel successful. And so depending on what's happened in his life, you know, perhaps there's been some things that have eroded that in his life. But I love what the scripture says, and we definitely always want to come back to the word of God. In First Timothy chapter 1, it says, Therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And in verse number 7 of First Timothy, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus. 
And so I think, Marilee, the answer is, is that every single person, when they're struggling with self-confidence, that confidence needs to be placed in the Lord. And to stir up the gift that God has given us when we recognize that every one of us have been created unique and special. No two people are the same. No DNA is the same. No fingerprints are the same, which means God has a plan for our lives. Gerald, the verse that I had uh, to tell this wife um, comes to us in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. And it says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. For who, the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down on the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such a hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your soul. And I, it's just basically consider Jesus. You know, take your eyes off of yourself, and, and maybe she can remind, remind him gently. You know, look at what the Lord went through. You know, just trust God that he consider what God wants to do in your life. Consider how the Lord was, um, how he felt. And then it doesn't make our feelings quite so validated. And and I would encourage anything in him. If he has low self-esteem, it's just like, I hate to compare it to a little puppy, but it's almost like a little dog. You know, we used to have this little dachshund at the house and it was the most disobedient little dachshund I've ever seen. And we, we would look for anything it would do and praise it. You know, if it would do one good thing and mind us one time, we'd go, good dog, good dog. And that reinforcement caused that little stubborn dachshund to want to go ahead and to do better. And sometimes I think that human nature is that way. That reinforcement, my goodness, you just handled yourself with such pride. And I was so That's proud right. of you. And you looked so confident. We, then he'll remember back, how did I look confident? And then he's going to be able to glean back into what he acted like and then go, oh, that's, that's that looked good. And well, just build that up in him. And especially, I think, with men, if they feel like they can't succeed, they won't even try many times. And and so that, again, is where within a marriage and, and for those of you listening, both Marilee and I were married for 31 years to our first spouses who uh, went home to be with the Lord. They both died of the same cancer. And and what that did for us, Marilee, it really made us try. Mm-hmm. I mean, we work at trying hard to make each other be blessed, feel blessed because I think so often in human nature, we tend to focus only on the things that aren't being done versus the great myriad of things that yes, are that they're being doing done. right. That's and, right. And so build up whatever you see in his personality that is strong and is confident and that he's doing right. And and then also <laughs> it's to remind him it's not what man thinks of him. It's what God thinks. Of That's him. right. That's a godly man. Somebody that God favors his eyes go upon. And the Lord says the, the Bible says God's eyes go to and fro upon the face of the earth looking for a man whose heart is true after him. God can do more with a blessed, godly man that loves him than he can do with anybody that has more skills or uh, more attributes that you'd think somebody else would you know, excel That's at. Right. God promotes. And so you just keep telling him how, you know, all the good things that he does, all the right um, because questions then, to answers and encourage that. Then he will even try harder. You know, the Bible says in First Timothy chapter 1 again, as you go on in verse number 12, it says, For I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I've committed to him until that day. And so, again, when we as men, and I'll, I'll speak as a man, entrust ourselves to the Lord and we we realize, you know what? God has given us a calling. That calling is, as that letter said, he, he's the husband. He's the head of the household. He's a dad. He has a career uh, in the military. All of these things are important. But the number one thing is his heart committed to the Lord to do what the Lord uh, wants him to do. And, you know, merely as we're discussing this about uh, wives helping 
enable their husbands, uh, you know, to succeed. Because, you know, I know a lot of wives who will berate their husband and say, oh, you're just like one of the kids. You're worse than having another child. You're you like can't, another. <laughs> you can't do this right. Well, sometimes you they are. But... You can't do that right. All of yeah. these different things. Yeah. It erodes them to the point that they won't try. Now, exactly. we're coming upon Christmas here, and I want to tell our listeners something that you told me even before we were married. <laughs> and you've remembered it. And I remembered it. You latched onto that one. I did. And <laughs> I wanted I wanna uh just encourage you wives out there. Here's what Marilee told me why we were dating. This was learned, girls. If you're <laughs> listening out there, women, girls, I learned this. It wasn't something I just always did. <laughs> Go ahead. You gotta clarify that because that was that was thirty one years of learning. You, you see, there is an advantage in our lives in that, you know, as we got through a very dark time in our life, we had plenty of time to reevaluate what ourselves to and, and we we always joke and uh, i think both of our or all of our kids would attest to the fact that we this got isn't the, the real <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really who they grew up with <laughs> the, we are the mellower versions of our former oh. selves but here ladies and i i'm going to tell you mm-hmm. this is going to work because it, it worked important. on me merrily while we were dating because you know i was always worried i'd try to buy her a little gift or something and you know always worried that i would get something that she wouldn't like Mm -hmm. and uh merrily told me she said you can never buy me something that i won't like now let me tell you ladies what that has done for merrily Merrily gets a lot more things than she would have the other way. <laughs> so if she would have started out and I'd given her I'm something and, and go, oh, that's the wrong color. I, d- I even bought clothes, <laughs> didn't I? Yes. And, <laughs> and I wear them. And, and, and so, you know, that's not an easy thing. But again, if you... If you build into your husbands the fact that they can they succeed, can succeed to please you, then yes. they will try harder to please yes. you. And so, you know, and and even if it's something that you don't like, I'm sure I've given you some stuff merely that you haven't liked. Oh, never, <laughs> never. You'll never but, get it out of me if I don't. But again. Ladies, that is learned just, behavior, ladies. Just, you just can change. Re- just remember something. If you want them to succeed, you have to give them the credit that exactly. they can succeed uh, to be able to do that. So, again, we want to hear from you. Write us your questions on life issues and relationships at castingcaresradio.com. Again, castingcaresradio.com. You can also go on Facebook. At Merrily, every week on Facebook, we have a chime in question and uh, our chime in question uh, that we had was how do I know what God's perfect will for my life is so again go on Facebook type in casting cares become friends of ours on casting cares so the our last casting cares question was how do I know what God's perfect will for my life is and we got a reply from Crystal Moncada and she said pray and listen Be patient and don't lean on your own understanding. He loves you and he will guide you. And it ends with a smiley face. And Paula Moore said, if it brings glory to him. So merely that is brings us to our casting cares question of the day, our chime in question. And this is a rather long question. So I'm going to read it and then we'll discuss it. This person has been married for three years. We have three children. I found out in uh, a year ago that my husband cheated on me. And this year I found out he didn't cheat on me just once, but with four women oh. and having unprotected uh, sex. Okay. This July, I went to uh, uh, attend a church conference for healing. And while I was there, my husband canceled the back card, left me with no money, Stuck. Uh, I was stuck on the East Coast. Max out our credit card. Brought bought an RV trailer. Moved it, moved out. And we've also since that time actually had a physical fight. I went to to the police, out uh, hoping he would get counseling. He had a restraining order put against me, and now I am not able to contact him in any ma- manner. 
People tell me that I should file a restraining order against him. Mm. Some say file for the separation before he does. A little part of me still has a fight for our marriage and kids. I have forgiven him for the affairs and for all he's doing to me. And when I pray for God to release me or to help me stop loving him, I end up with more desire to fight for the marriage and the more I love him. He has people encouraging him to quit and telling him I'm bad. I pray for for him every morning and before bed with my two girls. My son lives with him. On the way to school, I have my girls and myself say two or three things we like most about my husband, their dad. We say three things that we are thankful for from God. I'm trying to fight the good fight, but every time I turn around, it looks hopeless, though I'm not. I believe God will make this work out, and my backsliding husband will return to God. What are your thoughts about God healing both of us and reconciling our family? I believe he will make it better than we could imagine. I pray God takes out the enemy's agents from my husband's life and shows him the truth and brings him back uh, in his heart so Don will come back to the Lord. My, my kids need their dad, and I pray that God does this sooner or later. So that's our casting, our chime-in question on Casting Cares today is what do you do in a situation where you feel God is still wanting you to fight for your marriage? and your husband has betrayed, broken it, and there's even been a, a physical uh, situation. You know, Gerald, what I, what I gathered from her letter was she said, I believe God. And she is the one that has been wronged, and yet she's still willing to forgive this man and try to put their marriage together. And the key here is that he's a backslidden Christian. The, it, it, what it sounds like is he has once walked with the Lord and then walked away from God. And what I want to just speak to her heart is that if you're willing and you're praying, God can do anything. You're believing God that he wants you to still stay with this man. And even though other people might look at this and go, what in the world are you thinking? We can't really tell you That's right. to just throw in the towel and walk away from him if you feel like God wants you to stay and try to fight for your marriage. One thing that I do see uh, for her saying this is that her children are involved and that she's trying to um, fight for that with the kids because we do realize how terrible divorce is on children. Children, and that they will be scarred for life. And uh, where this mom is trying to lay aside maybe her feelings for her own kids' sake, that's to be commended. And I do commend her for doing Wait, this. You know, Marilee, one thing that I've seen through dealing with situations for the last 35 years, it does not do a parent any good to be bad-mouthing and tearing down the other uh, parent. That will come back to bite them. And so by her being They'll positive... They'll figure it out. In that's the, right. For her older. being positive and then, you know, if they go to their dad and he's saying, oh, she's just a terrible person and stuff, that will eventually come back to bite him and not her. You know, the other thing that I saw in this, all of this animosity that he's uh, putting on her is his own guilt because... He's he's the one that's done wrong here. He's the one that's had the affairs. You know, it's yes, never acceptable. She's the here. That's right. Mm -hmm. Never acceptable for a man to get physical with a woman. Never. All of those things are just dead wrong. But as you said, right now she's Her feeling heart like is still soft towards that's him. That's right. She's and feeling like she's supposed to fight for the marriage and so that's what she should do. Well, and I I can only think that maybe her heart still being soft towards him is from God because reality is most <laughs> people are going I'm signing the papers you yeah. committed adultery. And so what I just want to say to her is that keep yourself um, nurture yourself, take care of yourself and take care of your kids. That's the first thing you need to do with this. And then, you know what? Of course you're going to pray. And you know, the Bible says in Philippians one verse 19, it says, for I know that this will turn out for my deliverance through prayer and supplication in the spirit of Jesus Christ, according to my earnest expectation 
and hope that nothing shall I will be ashamed, but with all boldness, as always as now, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether in life or by death, and that that resolve stays in your heart, that you're going to serve the Lord no matter if he ever comes back to you or not. You're going to raise godly children. That's right. You're going to steady yourself. You're going to be that example. And you know, Paul's troubles turned out to exalt God. And maybe your trouble, and that's why I just want to speak some hope to you here. Maybe this is to exalt the Lord. Maybe people are going to look at this. I have known people that have had affairs and have had a divorce. And then you know what? They both get their hearts right with the Lord and they, and they get back. remarried. And what a what a wonderful, I've even known people that got remarried and went on to have two more kids. You know, they've had two, they got a divorce, get back together again and go ahead and have more children. And what a testimony that is about God's love and how he can heal anything. But you are on a road that's rocky and you can't make anybody do anything. So surrender completely to God. Let him direct your path. And it says here in God's word, this will turn out either way for you. That's right. God will take care of you. That's one of the things that I wanted to share, too. Although these days took you by surprise, mm. they did not take God no. by surprise. And you have the heart that wants to follow the Lord. And God and, knows how it's going to turn out. That's right. God knows how it's going to turn out. And he's got a future and a hope for you. Regardless of Regardless of what he does. Exactly. So you have to listen to the Lord. Yes. Just make sure you're not taking the guilt upon yourself because you didn't deserve this. he yes. is projecting that upon you. That you're the bad person, you're the evil person. Whoa, 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 whoa! You're not the one that mm -hmm. had the the affairs no. and broke the marriage vows and all those. And it's and never you, an excuse for a man right. to hit a woman ever. Yeah, I don't care if she hits him first. It's never an excuse. Never excuse. And again, some powerful scriptures for you to be able to read will be out of First Peter chapter two, where basically it says, uh, "For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving an example." that we should follow in his steps. And you know what's interesting about that, Marilee? And again, chapter divisions weren't here. We, we go right into from following the example of Jesus, even uh, in chapter three with wives, with an unbelieving husband, how they can be won by even the conduct of their wives and then husbands to their wives. So uh, again, powerful scriptures, but we definitely pray. And again, we want to hear from you. This is our chiming in question how do you fight? Because we know many of you have had this experience. How do you fight for a marriage where one is backslidden and has sinned? And uh, uh, give us some of your feedback from, from what you found in your lives on that. And tether your heart to God. You know, Don't let anything separate that with your relationship with the Lord. And just hang on to God no matter what happens. It's gonna, He's either going to change and want to come back or he's going to stay and be in that rebellion. So hang on to the Lord. Don't let anything change that. Hey, Marilee, before we take our last question of the day, we want to invite our listeners. We have something that's going to be a blast. It is going to be a nine-day trip to Ireland uh, in September of this uh, 2012 from September uh, 19th through the 27th. You can leave from anywhere in the country <laughs> and join We're us on time. that. We're going to have a great time. That complete brochure is on our website, castingcaresradio.com and also on Facebook, uh, Casting Cares Radio. And so if you're interested, please give us a call here at Joshua Springs. Our phone number is 760 760-365-0769. And again, that's Joshua Springs Calvary Chapel in Yucca Valley, California. You know, if you're anything like me, I'm I'm Irish, and um, I'm excited to go to Ireland and see where my you know relatives are from, my Heritage. ancestors. And it has a so, lot of Christian history. Yeah, if you have any uh, any of that in you, come join us. All right. Any well, of the Mar Irish. Yeah, Marilee, let's get to our last question. Okay. And this question is... Uh, she has three children and desperately wants a baby girl. All three of her children Aww. are boys. Should they try again, or is that not wise in today's world? <laughs> oh, bless her heart. <laughs> How can you tell anyone what to do when it comes to something like that, Gerald? That's beyond us. 
But all I can say is if you come to that resolve, you want a baby regardless. You don't ever want to go into it thinking that it's going to be a girl. girl. Because you know what? God knows if you can handle girls. God knows if you can handle boys. God knows if you can handle both. And that's how I look at it. I have a friend that I've known for years and years, and they have have tried and tried and tried. They have seven girls. Seven girls. They kept wanting for a boy. Seven girls. And they just thought, (laughs) one more time, I'll get a girl. One more time, I'll get a girl or a boy. And bless their hearts, they have seven girls. And so what he's decided now, he's such a blessing. He goes, I'm going to have seven sons because they're all going to get married. <laughs> so, you let you know, whatever you're feeling God can do, but just know that if you resolve to have a girl or resolve to have a child, you're going to be happy if it's a little boy or a little girl. That's the important thing. Yes. You know, Marilee, I came from a family of six boys. See, and your mom probably kept thinking, one more time. Yeah, one more time. I'm just, going, it's going, going to be have that a little boy. girl. And it's so funny because my daughter has three sons, and she would love to oh, have a yeah. little girl, too. And I, I remember her saying something to my mother, and my mother said, well, Stop. after the fourth <laughs> one, I never even thought that I could have a girl. Yeah. So, I, again, Sometimes it's just hard to know. I, again, I think the important thing is that we understand children are a blessing. No matter if they're boy or girl. They are they are a heritage from the Lord. It's important to remember that the Lord loves the little children mm-hmm. and he wants the little children to come to him. And so the question isn't Am I going to get a boy or a girl? The question <laughs> is, is the question. does the Lord want me to have another child? You know, merely there's a situation in China. We only have a, a short amount of time. China has a forced abortion policy, mm. which is horrendous. But in that, they have aborted so many baby girls that the population has shifted to where there is millions and millions of more boys than there are girls, which is going to be a huge issue. So again, life is precious. Uh, you you guys pray if, if you feel like you should have another child, but don't set your heart on just having uh, a boy or a girl. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, it says, The peace of God, which will surpass all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind through Christ Jesus. Let that peace of God, if you have a peace about having another child, then go ahead and try to have another child. But only God can guard that and take care of that request for you. That's and, right. You know, hey, God bless you. Another, whatever you want. Another half hour has flown by. Yes, Again, write us, castingcaresradio.com. Love Jesus and go to church. Thanks for tuning in to Casting Cares. Pastor Gerald and Mary Lee will be here next week at the same time to answer more of your questions on life issues and relationships. Email questions to castingcaresradio.com. And remember 1 Peter 5, 7, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you.